Hi Gemini, welcome to your March 2019 astrology and tower reading for mid-March. So Gemini, full moon in Libra energy, super moon energy, fellow air sign in the first degree. Feelings are probably going to bubble to the surface in a way that feels a little bit out of control. Um, it is a beautiful super moon. I'm not denying that. The difficulty with this one is that with Mercury, your ruler in Pisces retrograding at the time of this super moon, there may be a feeling of confliction when it comes to your own feelings. It could be a little bit overwhelming in that you can't get your feelings and your thoughts together. The supermoon is occurring in a very playful part of the sky. It's very energetic. It's very lovable. It's very creative. It's all these beautiful things. It's very romantic as well as a full moon. But with your ruler retrograding in the side of the sky for you that's to do with career, your ambitions and to an extent your reputation may feel a little bit like they're on the line in your head. Um, there may be a bit of a question for you of what it is that you truly want and what it is that you're feeling. It is not a super moon necessarily that warrants great action. Actually, next month, uh, the next full moon in Libra, because there are two, so that's fantastic. You know, two full moons in your fifth house is a great thing. I'm just saying that with this super moon you may not know entirely where you are, especially when it comes to romantic relationships, playful relationships, or relationships with your own children. Um, you may be a little bit overwhelmed and uncertain. On the same day, we have this aspect between Mars and Pluto. And Mars in the 12th, is trining Pluto in the eighth. Now, Pluto is natural eighth house energy. So many things below your skin, many feelings, things that have gotten under your skin, feelings that are very hard to ignore will bubble to the surface. And to an extent, uh, this gives you an opportunity to say what's on your mind. The difficulty is that you might not know. So before you make big, big, big decisions, because this one is an emotional one for Gemini's, I feel. 12th house, 8th house energy um, is very deep. It's very introspective. It's very much to do with a little bit of a rebirth for you. It's kind of as though you have to go through this to get out of it. Now, before that sounds scary, um, it's not. It's just that if you notice your feelings getting very, very intense, finding an outlet for that or finding somebody to talk to that you trust implicitly because trust would be an, an important thing um, in the people you do talk to you know a close confidant a best friend um, a parental figure somebody that you really talk to about your feelings because they might all cum uh, accumulate around this time now the sun is also shifting into Aries on the same day and that's a lot more comfortable for you than Pisces season was it takes the focus off your career to an extent and shifts it um on to your friendship sector, you know, friendships, close friendships, um, and the balance between how you interact with the people around you, your vibe and your tribe and that kind of thing. But really, Gemini, a lot of what this heavy, heavy feeling is to do with is getting the ball rolling in terms of a little bit of a clear out because this full moon does roll around again. So if you are feeling emotional, Bear in mind, you have a whole month to figure out what to do about it. Um, when the full moon ar arrives again in Libra, it won't be a super moon mind. Do bear in mind the super moon is pretty intense in terms of feeling, but it could throw up a lot of questions in your romantic life. Um, with your subconscious trining Mars, there will be strange moments of clairvoyancy, but there will also to an extent be feelings of fear and feelings of jealousy and fear of suspicion. So there is kind of a mix of the two. Good to let the energy pass for a couple of days and see what that was, but um, but see if we have anything additional to come out of the cards. Uh, Airy season is great for Gemini's because it does give you this chance to socialize and verbalize and articulate, but with your ruler 
um, still retrograding. You possibly feel with the Nine of Wands that you are a little bit overwhelmed and tired of having to defend yourself if you say the wrong thing or tr feeling like everybody's sort of getting at you for speaking your truth or trying to explain your point. Um, and you're thinking with the Three of Wands about what is your next step? What do you do about it? Or what is the best approach to take? With Temperance, um, you could be dealing with a Sagittarius person. Uh, and with the Ten of Pentacles, a lot of it could be to do with family um, dynamics, family group settings. There could be some sort of healing with children because of that super moon in your fifth house. But temperance is a beautiful energy that explains the twelfth house. The twelfth house is not to be feared. If anything, it is to let the light shine on what it is that you need to feel and then you can fix it. Because the first step to seeing what you have to change is to actually see it and then we have success the world card so you could be dealing with fixed energy taurus leo scorpio or aquarius or some sort of project is reaching a culmination this full moon is the beginning of the end of some chapter for most of you i feel though that it is, it is to do with possibly the people that you're surrounding yourself with who is asking you too many questions and not giving you enough information. Um, who you constantly feel like you have to defend yourself against. The Ace of Swords, the Moon and the Four of Swords. So again, we have the emotional vitality of this. Yet we have something sweet. Six of Cups. When the full moon rolls around in Libra and it's a super moon, it's a good time to take a couple of days to yourself to recharge. Mars trining Pluto gives you an opportunity to evaluate what it is that you're really thinking. Because you guys can verbalize just about anything that's going on in your head. You can articulate things in a way that... Um, sets you apart from other signs. That's what the Ace of Swords and the World card is here for. You have this way of communicating that is so very special. The difficulty is, as far as signs go, with the retrograding problems, you guys are kind of at the disadvantage with Mercury retrograding so much. And a lot of Gemini's to the point, because it's so common and it happens about three times a year, people don't want to acknowledge it. They try to ignore it. But sometimes the reason it happens is because your energy with Mercury can go so fast, it can go so quick, it can chop and change so much that sometimes you can make a decision and you don't really realize what you've done. And that's not saying that's a completely often thing, but it's sort of like these little lightning bolts come out of Gemini from time to time. You've said something that you can't take back. And for some of you, there's this weird sense that you've been biting your tongue on something, which isn't a typical Gemini characteristic, but it's kind of as though you've possibly been biting your tongue for a long time in terms of what your true focus is or your true agenda is with something. You know, what it is that you want to do. It's almost as though somebody could be calling you very flippant, but you could really be thinking of a plan long term in your head. And you're kind of tired of the assumptions that you're doing something that you don't feel like you are. Um, and it's actually weighing quite heavy on your psyche. The world in the Ace of Swords is finding this brand new beginning amidst a successful completion. The thing about the world is it's always a successful completion. It's always a completion that's benefited you in some way. For a lot of the signs that's come up to represent Uranus shifting, uh, shifting signs into Taurus. And for earlier degree Geminis, you're becoming so in tune with everything that you either feel you have a great advantage or a great disadvantage in what it is that you know. And for some of you, there's so much information coming into you and so much psychic energy, you know, feeling as though you're, you're in tune with something that nobody else is seeing or feeling like you're sort of in this vibe that other people aren't quite understanding right now. And for some Geminis, it's making you a lot more introverted. The beautiful thing about the moon card is that it means what will be revealed will be revealed if it needs to. Um, I don't feel like this is a big dramatic reveal for you in, 
in areas such as it is for the other signs. But with the Ace of Swords and the Moon, there is some kind of clarity comes from alone time. The Four of Swords is this echo, this lower echo of the Hermit energy, which is kind of the vibe that I feel for you. So I don't really see uh, why it didn't come up. The strange point uh, that's come up for a lot of signs with the Piscean season is that diving deep isn't everybody's forte. Um, and you guys are sort of continuing that on through March. Aries season will feel different because Mars is going to go into your sign on the 31st. And that's huge. That's that's really energetic. That will make you feel such a boost. But it will also be kind of exhausting. If you could recuperate a bit of your energy before that happens, Gemini, it would be a great thing to do. Use this full moon to go inward, to rest, to reflect, and see if there's anything that is you know, a vulnerability that other people are possibly aware of that you're not. Um, with Uranus shifting into Taurus, that's going to be a chapter of you guys that if you deal in things like astrology or tarot and things, you're going to gain this awareness that puts you in an advantage, but it's also going to limit how much information you want to share. For some of you, you'll probably come off social media. Some of you will probably want to put less out there. A lot of you are going to be valuing privacy, particularly towards the end of March, in a way that isn't often seen as a typical Gemini thing. But you guys have that need for privacy too. It's just not as obvious as it is for some of the other signs. Actually, um, what I kind of see for you guys is this real abundance of healing that is generating um, success. Which is funny because the more aware you become of the law of attraction, and the world card is kind of like the law of attraction. Um, it's also in some decks known as the universe. So a lot of Gemini is discovering the law of attraction, discovering, you know, the typical introduction most people get is the secret. Um, by, I think it's Rhonda Byrne, but a lot of other people use Abraham Hicks, um, and some people, in fact, most people actually know of it, um, in general without reference or without title. You know, they don't exactly know what it is, but they use it. Geminis are always kind of good at that. I always find that the Gemini people I speak to generally have some form of, um, awareness to it. Maybe it's a Mercury thing. It's intellectualizing things. It's it's speaking things into existence. Uh, that's a powerful weapon, actually, with the world and the Ace of Swords. It is speaking things into existence. But if you feel like you're tired of fighting for something or explaining yourself, Gemini, you need to rest rather than just expect things to change because you're you're a bit drained on something. And it may be to do with nostalgia. It may be to do with something that is uh, past reference. Because of all the cards that I see in the tarot, this one is usually referred to the past card. You know, thinking about the past, thinking about the way things were. Sometimes looking back with rose tinted glasses or feeling as though there's some reason you can't move on for the past. If you want to know why you can't move on from the past, it's not because you're meant to be there. It's because it has an answer that you've not learned yet. And that's what the moon can do. The moon can illuminate what that truth was. The moon and the four of swords is so meditative. It's meditation. It is personal insight that you can't get from any source uh, be it astrology, be it tarot, be it advice, be it um, anything. Sometimes there's an answer that just has to come from sitting on your sitting on your own, uh, meditating, and letting it come to you. It's about dropping that resistance. It's about dropping the need to verbalize it and just letting it be. There's something trying to come through for you, 
And you guys are going to learn very, very, very well how to become aware of that and how to channel it. The world in the Ace of Swords means that it is a successful endeavor. Some of you are becoming published for the first time. Some of you want to write books. Some of you want to write a blog, start a website. It's all very well aspected. It's a talent. So it's, it's a talent that can make you money. It can make you successful. But a lot of the answers already live in your brain, even if you don't know what it is. So if you're wondering what your next step is, Gemini, with the 12th house energy going around and that Mars trying Pluto, it can bring you this powerful sense of why. This powerful sense of belief in something bigger than you can see, which is really cool, actually. It's really nice. Um, actually, with temperance, uh, the moon and the world being your own major arcana, kind of want to look at those uh, on their own. The moon, temperance, and the world. One of the greatest uh, sources of manipulation that people have over each other is calling each other crazy. And it's trivialized now to a point that it's not taken seriously. Um, but I've always found when you hear somebody say that so-and-so... you know, someone they've been involved with at a very, very personal level, if they throw out loosely the term crazy, um, oftentimes they're referring to their own actions within the bond. I'm not saying that's in every scenario. In other cases, if somebody says that their ex was abusive, that's different. But the term crazy is something that people use to suppress. You kind of seem to have an energy whereby you had an idea and you sort of, sometimes people, when they become very enlightened, get torn apart by others and called crazy and things. Or they become aware, or they're trying something new. You know, when you're trying the law of attraction, some people say that's really stupid. Um, that's not scientific. And everything is, you know, their rationale for everything is science when they're not a scientist. Um, what this is telling me, Gemini, is that you have some sort of belief system or vision or an idea that is working for you and you have to be wary of people that are calling you crazy because they're maybe not your people you know they're maybe dragging you a little bit and it's not for you to sort out it's not for you to act upon it's for you to spend some time by yourself and think am I doing this for them or am I doing this for me that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting for you this month it's actually quite it's very introspective. Probably not your typical Gemini reading, but St. Bridget, don't back down. Stand up for what you believe is right. So that ties in perfectly with what I was just stay, um, saying to you. That if you feel as though people are dragging you for no reason, you probably could do with a little bit of space. Sacred space. Create an altar or visit a power place to connect with the divine. We also have boundaries. Love yourself enough to say no to others' demands in your time and energy, which is all about that self-reflection, that spending time alone, um, sticking up for yourself and your beliefs and unconditional love. Love yourself, others in every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. So you can ask for space. You can do it from, um, from and with a language of love, from a place of love, and you can be very accepting that you just need that time by yourself. That's okay too, Gemini. You don't have to be the life and soul of every party. You can spend time by yourself and really look into what it is that you need to do. The super moon's very intense. It'll drain your energy with Mercury being retrograde in your um, tenth house. People at work may feel particularly draining, um, maybe very busy there. Do remember to schedule in some time for yourself because that's the only way that you're going to um, charge yourself under the full moon rather than exhaust yourself. So I love you guys. I'll see you in the next set of readings. Bye.